And we're going to be teaching on as unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. Lord dealt my heart about teaching this tonight, so pray for me. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23 through 24. The Bible reads, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Reading this today touched my heart about some certain things happened to us. I mean, my wife uh, recently. We'll be sharing that uh, pretty soon. But the word, that word heartily in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23. It comes from a Greek word which means to breathe voluntarily, gently. When we do things as unto the Lord, it should be just like breathing. Sometimes people say, well, breathing is, is involuntarily. I'm going to get to that. What I'm saying is we can control our breathing. You know, you got swimmers that can control their breathing. Um, uh, people that play instruments control their breathing. Um, people that sing control their breathing. Um, control our breathing. We can control our breathing just like we can control doing things for the Lord. And if things in men and women's lives aren't done for the Lord, people don't do these things if they don't uh, do certain things in life as far as their job, job is concerned or um, doing things for other people. If they don't do it as unto the Lord, others suffer the outcome. Recently, my wife and I, we visited a certain place and stayed at the same hotel we always stay in um, when we visit this certain place. Everything went as usual. Checked in. Got our keys, uh, went upstairs, and opened the door. And the room looked like it was not properly cleaned. They had a, um, some Cheerios, <laughs> Fruit Loops, um, lying going all into the uh, place, and um, the bathroom was um, not uh, clean. And, um, just, you could see, you could tell that it was not vacuumed and where this not. Anyway, we shared this with the desk clerk. The desk clerk uh, promptly gave us another room. So, Miss Sister Walls, we kind of promptly went to the other, got the key, went to the other room and opened the door. We sat our bags down and, and uh, uh, I sat our bags down and I sat on the bed. The bed was, when I sat on the bed, I almost flipped over because it was like a seesaw. It was like... <laughs> I was like, oh, my Lord. So I went to the desk clerk again. And I said, sir, I, I'm not wanting to complain. I'm not. But um, the, the room you just gave us, you know, you upgraded us to a, a better room. Um, the bed's not um, intact. I think the um, something wrong with the bed is broke or soft kilter. So they sent uh, people up to that room, and um, the maintenance man was there, and the uh, uh, head, uh, the head maid was. She came up too. But anyway, they saw that the bed was messed up, and I heard over the intercom the guy. He's like, "Oh, uh, uh, move them to the room such and such, but wait, we want to check that room out to make sure it's good. Tell them not to go in there until we make sure it's good." The next day, next day, uh, me and my wife, we went to a, uh, a drive through restaurant, and my wife, she ordered something, and she said, could you not put this item on there, please? Said, oh, yeah, we got you. Know. So she got her item, um, and they took that item off she didn't want, and um, a few other items. <laughs> There's a lesson to be learned in all, all of these events. In the Bible, God never goes 
to the lazy or the idle when he needs men and women for his service. He goes to those who are already at work. Moses was busy with his flock in Horeb. Gideon was busy threshing wheat by the wine press. David was busy caring for his father's sheep. Elisha was busy plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. Nehemiah was busy being the, being the king's um, cupbearer. Amos was busy following the flock and raising sycamore fruit. Peter and Andrew in the New Testament, they were busy casting a net, fishing in the sea. James and John, they were busy mending their nets. Matthew, I said, man, preacher, you're just going to the Bible. Yes, Matthew, he was busy at the custom seat. Many people who want to be missionaries, preachers, ministers, youth pastors, sometimes they're, they're just sitting, waiting on the Lord, waiting on God to tell them what they should do. They'll still be sitting at an old age. They're not waiting on God. God is waiting on them. God is waiting on them. The answer is to work. It's to work. Do what you know to do. If you attend this church, ask the pastor if you can help. We'll put you to work. I'm not going to the pastor and ask him for anything. Well, wait on God. He'll be waiting forever. These instances things that happened to uh, me and my wife uh, recently uh, it all comes down to someone not really caring about what they're doing it's a just a job a paycheck to them you know, the rooms were kind of uh, in the hotel the rooms uh, two of the rooms were messed up and uh, well, one woman uh, the head person she um, was making an excuse for you know hey we don't have enough help and whatever but, you know, I don't know if they were Christians or not. I'm, I don't, don't want to judge. But by the work that uh, was going on there at the uh, hotel, it seems like um, people didn't really care uh, what they were doing. They just wanted to get a paycheck and get on out there. You can't do things in and for your church to make you a Christian. You do things in and for your church because you are a Christian. But I shared earlier about the hotel and the drive through were examples of people working, but not unto the Lord. Are you here tonight? I put down here. Are you a servant of Christ in everything you do or just when you are seen by men? You only do right when somebody's watching you. Servant of Christ makes every effort to keep his or her heart pure. To keep it pure. Servant of Christ is called to be righteous in all things. When we constantly abide consciously, consciously in his presence, and live to be well-pleasing in God's eyes. Decisions that we make become much clearer for each one of us. We won't have a, I don't know what the will of God is for my life attitude. Hello? The Lord plays, he pays close attention to each one of us. God's eyes run to and fro upon the faith of this earth. He's looking. He's looking at all of us, me included. I mean, just you say, well, you're a pastor. You know, you, uh, he doesn't care what you do. Yes, he cares exactly what I do. Because if I'm messed up, everything else is messed up. Everything, I have to be right before the Lord. I have to be 
um, what the Lord wants me to be. Ask yourself the question, is what I'm doing pleasing to the Lord? Is how I'm working pleasing to the Lord? In this way, put down here today, I can always be cleansing my thoughts and thus gain a peace in life that only someone who lives for him could know. We always have to stay on top of this thing right here. Every single minute, second, hour, day, week, every single, all the time, we got to stay on top of this because we don't, it's going to get on top of us. It's going to be messed up. I want to bring out to the Christian tonight, the born again believer by the Spirit of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever you're doing, do it for the glory of God. Not because someone is telling you to do it, not because it's a duty. No, do it as unto the Lord. For it is then that God will tap on your shoulder and say, hey, i got a job for you. Because he knows that you're not going to do it as unto men. And then you're not doing it for, as the Bible says, vain glory. I was looking up that um, vain glory. It means empty glory or self-conceit. Hey, look what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. The hotel and drive through experience we went through was showing me that all of us need someone to help us be better. Hello? Me too. That's why we have uh, overseers, pastors. Oh, I'm going to get to that. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ. The church of Jesus Christ, it exists for three reasons. Number one, to exalt God. To exalt God, which is why we worship, it's why we sing, and we give praises to him. Also, it is to edify his people. To edify his people, which is why we teach and study, like we're here tonight. We teach and study the word of God. You're here because you want to be edified by the word of God. Built up. Amen? Amen. And also, to evangelize the world. Or to evangelize the unsaved. Which is why we preach salvation. Witness and soul win for his kingdom. The church does not solely just exist to evangelize. Mm-mm. Okay? It exists to build the saints so that they in turn will evangelize and do the work of the ministry. Are we here tonight? Let's go back. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. Probably getting ahead of myself. Pastors, teachers, whatever. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the work of the ministry. The ministry. It's not um, a specialized occupation just limited to men with professional training. Okay? The word ministry means service. The word minister means to serve. Okay? It includes every form of spiritual service. What this verse teaches us, I put down here, is that every believer should be in the ministry or in his service. Well, I'm not a preacher. If you're a Christian, you should be in the service of the Lord. Hello? 
I don't want to hear that preacher. Tell me how to be blessed. I'm telling you how to be blessed. Every Christian is commissioned. For every Christian is a missionary. Every one of us, every one of us are missionaries. It's been said that the gospel is just, is not just something to come to church to hear. The gospel is not just something to come to church to hear, but something to go from the church to tell. Hello? And we are all appointed to do that. Nowadays, some churches, they want to hire a church staff to do full-time Christian work so that the congregation can sit in church on Sundays to watch them sing and worship God. Like some type of a show. Well, I did my show today, gave my 50 cent or whatever I got to do, and um, I'll, I'll see what I got to do next Sunday. See what, no, see what they got for me next Sunday. What kind of ah, dance and act they got for me. Every Christian is meant to be in full-time Christian service for the church, okay? There is, I put down here, though, there is a special ministry or service that God has called some to do. That's what the Bible says. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? For what, preacher? Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Perfecting. I looked up all these words in the Greek. Perfecting, it means to complete thoroughly. Repair. Literally, it says here, to adjust. Okay? That's what the word perfecting means. To adjust. To fit in the frame. To mend. To make perfectly join together to prepare and to restore for the perfecting of the saints. These divinely given men I'm going to say this now and women oh, you just caught me off Pastor got you right there should not serve in such a way as to make people permanently depend upon them. Okay. Now, when I raised some, when I raised our kids, uh, me and Sister Walls, when we were raising our, our boys, we didn't raise them to permanently depend on us. It's the same way in the ministry. When men and women get saved, God didn't. God doesn't want people to permanently depend on the pastor. Pastor, what I got to do? Pastor, pastor, pastor. No, you need to grow. Instead of having that, uh, instead of having that uh, bottle of. Pastor, I need some more milk. You need to throw that bottle down and get some, <laughs> get some uh, a steak. When I say women, the Bible states that in Titus chapter 2 and verse 3 and 5, it says, The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober. I didn't know the one, I didn't know the, the aged women should teach. I thought the Bible says the women can't teach. It says that they should teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now that's a whole other teaching. Oh, Pastor, go in there. I want to hear about women preaching. It's a whole other teaching. I ain't even going into that. When people call, boy, pastor, anyway. As a pastor and a teacher, I should work as a workman for God toward the day when the saints will be able to carry on or live for the Lord with little supervision. Hello? 
Mm -mm. We might illustrate this as follows. Got my wife, trusty ruler. Bellado, could you read that? Yes. It says the gospel message taught by the pastor. That's the church right there. Now, this church has a nucleus, nucleus of people surrounded. The gospel, those that got saved, those that filled with the Holy Ghost, they're right there in the middle. So those people right there that are taught by the word of God, they go out and reach someone else and say, hey, you need to come to our church. So they come. That person comes to the church, stays around uh, in the teaching, gets saved, gets filled with the Holy Ghost, and then they go back out and reach someone else. It is, as I put in there, it's a, it's a circle. And it goes to do the same thing, back and forth, back and forth. Like I mentioned uh, Sunday morning, that's thanks, bro. I mentioned um, that th uh, Sunday morning that God reached me and I reached my wife. My wife in turn reached Reverend Davishar. Reverend Davishar in turn reached untold, I don't know how many people. You, you may have reached someone, like I told you, like Rodney. Rodney went out, invited his neighbor, his neighbor invited somebody else and just ch 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 chain reaction. Everyone does their part. Not just the pastor, this your church pastor, it is. No, this is God's church and you're God's people. All of us working together. So, well, who are you invited out, Pastor? Oh, what are you doing? Uh, if you look around, <laughs> there are folks that's here because um, that we've invited out. Have you looked at Al, uh, Lindell, his brother? Uh, you know, from ever inviting out, out matter of fact, from invited, inviting out Lindell. Lindell invited his brothers. And all these folks inviting other people. Al invited his wife. Just, it's a, it's a, a chain reaction but it's a constant chain reaction everyone doing their part as we said the power of one changed life the power of one invite one invite how many people have you invited out have you invited out one person to church in the last month now, I'm not one to push people or whatever this now, but you know, some, sometimes you, you have to teach uh, some things, just like the people that was at the hotel. You know, the, 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 uh, the main maid, she should have went back and checked the work. You know, whoever's making up that bed should have known that that bed was like a seesaw. Whoever made that sandwich that gave Sister, Wall, <laughs> that gave Sister Walls, they should have known that... Um, this, they shouldn't have took everything off the sandwich. Anyway. So, what I'm saying is, someone, someone, as the word of God says, God has put people in different places. Some, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists, people like that, for the perfecting of the saints. For the perfecting of the saints. To get us all doing those things that the Lord has shared with us. As we shared before, those people, they go forth and minister to others according to the word of God. Jesus said in Luke chapter 14 and verse 23, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and byways. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that they may feel or that my house may be filled. Others that put down here tonight, others that are invited, they come. And it's just a repeat of them hearing the gospel message that was preached to them, and they begin to invite others. You never know who you might invite. Like Sister Wall, she invited Reverend Davishar. He became a missionary. You never know. You may not can see, but the Lord sees everything. In this way, the church begins to grow and expand. But it takes all of us. It takes all of us. Not just some, but all. It's the divine method of producing growth in the body of Christ, both in size and spirituality. If you come from a church background, like 
Some of us do. The tendency is to think that Christian service just happens at church. In reality, the most effective ministry, and when I say remember ministry, to serve, service. The most effective ministry or service happens when you're working on your job, when you're eating a burger at a restaurant, if you're in school, if you're working out. That's the most effective ministry out there. Not in the church, just sitting down, just chilling out, whatever, and you're doing things, whatever it's not. No, effective ministry is out there. That's what God has called us to do. We come in here. It, there's a sign in some churches. They say, come in to worship and leave to serve. You know, I see another in signs um, in, I think, Baptist churches. In the book of Acts, got a few minutes. We see the early church hearing the apostles teach and preach. They begin to break bread together. And then they go out and turn the world upside down, evangelizing the world. And I, when I read that, I thought about our church, New Testament Christian Church. We get the teaching, we get the preaching, we get the fellowship, we eat. <laughs> but we evangelize the world. Just like the old, just like in the in the uh, New Testament. I know this can be challenging. It's just, you know, I just want to just do this and I just want to, believe me, I know. I know it could be challenging, but you know something? Life consists of challenge after challenge. There is one big challenge that each of us face daily. We can't help but look at this challenge daily. Okay? Whatever problems that you may have, whatever it is that you've gone through, what uh, or, or going through right now, your biggest challenge in life is yourself. Is yourself. We all need to keep pushing ourselves to keep growing. There's no, there's no, I mean, sometimes I tell Sister Walls, man, I just want to just have a vacation. I want to just go somewhere with nothing scheduled and just, just lay back and just relax. But there's no free rides in life. Maybe one day I will, may, uh, we may get a vacation where there's nothing scheduled. But we have to continue to keep, I'm trying not to preach. We have to continue to keep ourselves, to, to begin to push ourselves to grow. To grow. Don't be complacent. Don't be stagnant. You're always growing as time moves forward and you push yourself to be the best. Hello? Might as well make the best of it and keep challenging yourself to be better. Life becomes much easier when we do everything as unto the Lord. It does. As we do these things as unto the Lord and not as unto men. Because our love to and for him will be the driving force in our lives. Of course, you got People pushing you to be your best. But it's only for the glory of God. It's only for the glory of God. I have leaders that push me to be my best. And you, you have a leader tonight, which is me. They help you be your best. You got to be your best as unto the Lord. Because if all of us aren't our best, then someone, just like these people in that hotel, in this restaurant, someone is going to be affected by it. Someone's going to be affected by it. When we practice this, we become less dependent on the people watching over us. God himself will fill us with the desire to do all good for his sake, for his sake and he will bless, he will bless what we do for him to be a better version of ourselves. 
you know, a better version of ourselves in God. And the gospel means a better life for God in the future. So tonight, looks like I'm a few seconds over. Let all of us take Paul's words to heart. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Brother, could you please pray? Over us, keep us safe in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you as our prayer. We'll see you next service.